Hey, it's Mike here with TIY Tiny It Yourself, and today I'm gonna to start building my tongue box, and right now I'm gonna show you how I'm getting started. Okay, so I don't have any updated drawings, but this is sort of a approximation of the tongue box I'm building. And the principle here is that I'm gonna have electrical and solar components in the bottom half, as well as in the storage. And then on the top is gonna to be the mini split, which is gonna be vented. The only change here is that the mini split maybe goes up to two thirds and starts, and then I'm gonna mesh vent kind of this whole thing so I get as much airflow as possible, but I'm still gonna trim it out. See that on the actual house, it's gonna be about four inches recessed from the front face of the house, and it's gonna go all the way down there and come out to about there. So the very first step I've done is throw this three quarter inch piece of plywood on it. Originally was a two foot by eight foot piece that I bought from the store, so I didn't even have to rip a board. And I'll show you how I figured out how to cut it without getting too much loss in terms of your turning radius on your truck. This might not make that much sense, but this is the bumper of the truck that I'm gonna be pulling this with. And the hitch comes out five inches from the back of the bumper, and then the bumper goes out 37 inches on each side. So you can pretty easily do a mock-up with a board where you come out, in my case, five inches from the hitch ball, and then you can mark at 37 inches, again in my case, and then you can kind of just turn and turn and see where you'll be at. And in this case, I'm maybe sacrificing five degrees of turning radius when I'm backing this up or parking it or whatever, but I think that's gonna be okay. And if I get really paranoid, I can build maybe a metal bar bumper thing in case I back into it. And so here's a better view of that. You can see we're getting, instead of that, we're getting that about because there's gonna be some sheathing on the outside of that. So, and by the time you're there, you're already basically jackknifing anyway. So not too bad. It's also good to figure out the size of your tongue box and make sure that all your components are gonna fit. In our case, we have a 32 inch mini split. So I just wanted to make sure the front face of it was at least 32 inches wide. And then the solar components are a bit smaller, so I'm not too worried about them. This is kind of unnecessary, but I went the extra mile and cut out those sort of mini rib slots so I wouldn't have a ton of bugs crawling up in there. And I'm gonna go and cut out a hole in the middle of this so that I can get some extra room for some solar batteries down there. So if you've been following this build, you know that we've been doing metal studs to stay really light. But in this case, I'm actually going to do wood studs. So this is probably going to be easy for anyone to follow. And that's because I'm going to be only using a few and I'm going to be coming in at so many weird angles because of this 45 degree I'm doing so I can get that turning radius. And so wood just makes more sense. It's harder to come in to metal studs at a lot of different angles. And I am going to rip a lot of the studs into two by twos to save some weight as well. And so I'm going to do a stud that is going to connect to the metal here, sort of be my anchor stud. And one thing I'm gonna do is use some of my extra window flashing tape because it has a sort of rubber self-sealing membrane on there. And I'm gonna put it inside this groove so that anything I screw through won't become a issue with water getting in the side here. All right, so I'm about to cut my storage hole out in the middle of this and I've got all my safety gear and stuff on because I'm doing not the safest method. I would like to have a better way to do this, but I'm essentially just gonna be dropping the blade down in and then rolling. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm finishing the corners off with my handy Japanese saw. So there it is. It definitely lost some structural integrity with that hole. It's still pretty strong, but over time it will weaken. And so one thing I am doing is I'm taking a two by four and splitting it and putting one half on the bottom so it meets this metal here. So I have an even bottom and then one half on top and then I'm gonna anchor it through so I have a pretty good support all the way around and something to screw through for the sheathing. All right, I've got my little flashing tape strips which were really satisfying to put in. And now that that's done, I can start getting the wood in there. Okay, so here's the first piece. You can see that I puzzle pieced it so it fits in here and it's just gonna go like that. And I'm gonna do that all the way around so I have a nice structural element here. Okay, with a little bit of work, here is where I'm at. I've got one of the posts in just standing there to see how well it'll fit. I've got my piece on the bottom and the top there and that feels really strong now. This is already so strong, I don't feel a need to put another one on the top. And then I've got this guy here, which the left piece of sheathing will attach to. The center part here is actually gonna be a door and it's gonna be hung on hinges. So it doesn't need to be fully supported right there. So I don't need an anchor post there. Hopefully this will give you a better idea of that shape. 
and I made sure I had a screw that would go all the way down into the other piece so I got a really nice clamp there and a stronger beam. So this is cool, you can start to get an idea how the mass of the tongue box is going to look based off these posts, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. I definitely wouldn't go any bigger, that's for sure. It's also cool to see this because I wanted to do crazy giant windows somewhere on the house, and before I decided to do those, I was actually going to do a bay window right here, but just because of the layout of the house, it seemed like it was better to throw them in the loft, so someone should do that sometime, if they haven't already. They probably have. So I split this board at an angle for the posts that will attach to the house themselves. And of course, one side decides to go like that, super curvy. Must have been some tension in the grain or something that was released, that's crazy. This one's still straight though, so we're good. Okay, so after a bit more framing, this is where I'm at. And I just wanted to mention that I have been using just some extra two inch and three inch screws that I had laying around two inch for when I'm doing the plywood into the two by twos, and then the three inch for when I'm connecting two two by twos together or when I'm going through into the wall. So I've also made sure to have some good anchor points going into the studs on the inside. For example, there's one right here that has a really good connection with a stud on both sides and then I'm connecting to one of the beams up there as well. So I have some good structure here. Basically, all of the joints I did were done by toenailing. So for example, here I have toenailed in with a screw on the bottom and the top. And my next step is in order to give this section some more water resistance, I'm gonna paint at least up to a foot with some exterior white paint. And maybe if I get overzealous, I can do all of the beams. And another noteworthy point, this is gonna be my second shelf for the mini split. And these beams are not only for more attachment points for the sheathing, they are also going to support that OSB, just because I have some extra OSBs, so just imagine that's OSB, it'll sit there and I'll just notch out these beams and maybe put some supports up against the wall so it holds up, because it's pretty heavy. So because this is the inside of the box, I'm not even worried about taping it. No one's really gonna see it that much. All right, so there is the paint job. I felt like I could just stop right there and that'll be okay. I really went to town on the bottom underneath it, which is probably the most important part, even though I'll likely do some metal flashing covering the inside of that triangle because that's sort of gonna be open to the inside of the tongue box. Okay, now I'm getting ready to cut the half inch pieces of plywood that are gonna go on the sides and I'm gonna cut them at an angle. That's so they meet flush with whatever door I put here and I'm hoping that I can find a hinge with a axis that's far enough out so that it will open up outward and then that way it won't sort of just pinch against itself and I can still open it. And this is sort of a good illustration of that. If the hinge is right here, it's not gonna be able to open. It's just gonna be able to close more. But if the hinge is out here, then it'll be able to open out like that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this board right now. All right, this board officially fits perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the outside and while it dries, I'm gonna work on the other side and then I'm gonna tack this up and then we'll see what happens next. And again, I'm painting this guy for moisture reasons. This isn't gonna be the finished result on the outside. And I was really wanting to do marine grade plywood for this job, but I could not find any at my local big box store and I wanted to get started on this right away. So hopefully this will get me sort of closer to marine grade plywood. And then over this, I am going to be doing some cedar tongue and groove, which will be framed out with some cedar trim. Also, if there's one takeaway you should get from this video, it's how sometimes when you just cut a board, you'll have a ton of sawdust on it. And yeah, you can sort of shake it off a little bit, but then there'll be a bunch of little chunks that'll hit you in the eye. Well, watch this. See, it's mostly off, but now there's still a bunch of residual stuff on here that you probably can't see. Down on the grass, move it forward a foot. Totally clean, totally clean eyeballs will thank you. Okay, so I'm doing six inches on center screws just like I would with normal sheathing. And I've already put a few in just so that I can tack it up there and then I'll go and do the rest. And that's when your drill runs out of battery, always in moments like this. Oh no, of course. Just give me enough to get through. Yes. Okay, swap the battery. Okay, now before I put that sideboard on, I am gonna have to put this crazy insert that I cut in. And that's because 
If I put that side on first, it'll be geometrically impossible to fit in. Hopefully it'll fit. These types of pieces never seem to fit right away, so I'll probably be like hacking off eighths of an inch all over the place. <laughs> it's gonna fit really well. And then, nope, I've got a, <laughs> a weird gap there. Maybe if I just punch it, it'll, it'll work. Okay, so now I've of course had to shave an eighth of an inch off the longest side so that it will fit. And it's actually not gonna be geometrically impossible if I had that piece in, I can just go in this way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah again. Where's my, my drill? I get my drill. Uh. So here is where I am at right now, and I'm really happy with the results. It is pretty massive on the inside. It's easily gonna fit the mini split right there, and a lot of electronic stuff and possibly some storage in here. You might not be able to get the full depth of the space in here, but this is the front face of our electrical box, and it's gonna easily fit in. I could fit it in over there. I could probably fit the inverter and other things here, and then use uh, the right third for storage, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm back at it again. As you can see, I've cut that hole out. I still need to cut one out over there. And I'm gonna go and put some extra house wrap on these walls, just because why not? My next thing after that is going to be putting the cedar on that and building the doors. And the mesh that I got, which is kind of interesting, sort of, sort of experimental, we'll see if it looks good or not. This is just from my local sort of big box store and it's gonna go where the mini split is so it can breathe. And, then, and I realize that no matter what type of metal screen material I have, we're still gonna get some rain possibly down in there that I don't want. And so I'm probably gonna do some sort of louvered situation on the other side, at least on this main panel. I could have just put louvers instead of doing this, but I don't like how industrial that would be. Our house is already industrial enough with the galvanized mini rib. And so what I'm gonna do is hide it behind here so there's gonna be sort of slats on the back side of it so you'll only see this and hopefully they won't be too obvious and that way the rain will kind of slough off and hopefully come back to the outside and not ruin the inside of the tongue box. And now I hear rain so I need to get to work. Okay, so I've got my house wrap mostly on and yes, I just stapled it because if I used these guys, which I used on the rest of the house, it would make all of the pieces of cedar I'm about to put on it uneven and then I'd be shimming forever and there's gonna be so much pressure from the boards on this anyway that I'm not worried about it coming off. I also went and wrapped it around this so hopefully there'll be a little bit less water getting caught up in here. Another thing I did was make this piece right here and basically it's gonna match up with the door like this. That way the door can open over these tongue pieces but there will still be trim going below it right here which will be even. And then I still have this lip that the bottom will hit on. So for a sort of one-handed door example, it's gonna sort of do that right there. Woo! All right, so I tacked it up and I'm feeling really good about the way it looks. I think it'll look pretty cool with this cedar as well. We'll see though. I don't like how I accidentally left like a quarter of an inch there trying to be sort of conservative, but then painted it white. So you can kind of see right there. By the way, this is the sort of latest map out of the tongue box itself. So I'm gonna have that mesh door on top. I'm gonna do two door hinges that are sort of inset. I'm gonna kind of split this top cedar trim piece. I've got my two doors here. The only difference is I might, ooh! The only difference is that I might take this little lock piece and put it up here so I can lock all three at once. But if that's difficult, I don't really care because there's not gonna be anything valuable in here. And then these sections are gonna be my tongue and groove. And then I'm gonna trim everything out, do a double trim here so it matches. Hopefully it looks good. Okay, so this is where I'm at right now. And I also have put the little piece of OSB there to be at the right depth. And then the two hinges for this door that will swing out are gonna go there and there. And this is the door. I'm putting the metal mesh on it right now. Here's the trim that's gonna go on the top of that. And because I don't wanna eat up too much width with a table saw, I'm using the Japanese saw because it cuts away basically nothing. That way the edges of this top trim will line up with the top trim on the other walls. And I think the Japanese saw cut turned out pretty well. And so we're gonna have the top there and the bottom there. And it's gonna open up like that. Yeah. All right, quick update. Lindy and I got this little door on mostly. Still need to screw those screws in because they're too long and I'm gonna have to hack them off with the grinder on the other side. Just because I had so many of them, I wanted to use them. 
and the hinges were a little bit difficult. You can see it doesn't close all the way without pushing it, but it will be latched, so it's not, not the end of the world. It kind of needs to break in a little bit, and that's probably because of the way that the hinges were set in sort of far. Otherwise, it would probably close more properly. And this is one of the doors for the lower compartment, and I wanted to show you how I'm doing that. It's really simple. It's just the one by four cedar pieces of trim, framing it out like a window, so it goes the full length for the top piece, and then not the full length for the bottom piece, and that helps water run off. And then just like the siding, I'm doing the six inch tongue and groove pieces here. And you can watch the siding video to see how to do that. And I'm just kind of slotting them in and then I'm gonna attach it. I do wanna mention to make that corner work, I did have to run this through the table saw at like a 30 degree angle to make it all be nice and snug. I'm gonna show you the last piece going in just cause it's pretty satisfying. The angle I cut here was 15 degrees. I found that to be the perfect angle. All right, so I got one door on, which I think looks great, but there's one little issue. The hinges don't move, they're stuck. But sometimes you kind of do stupid stuff when you're hungry, and uh, I was hungry and I just ate and I came back out and I was like, of course it doesn't open. Mike, you literally screwed it into the frame behind it, so obviously it's not gonna open. So I thought there was something weird going on inside of it with the hinge, but nope, it's great, which I'm happy about because I got this pretty tight corner here. Okay, so I've installed both of the doors, so there I am with it right now, and the next step could be to put these handles on, and I know I wanna do one on each door, and I have a third one that I can put on that guy, but it's kinda easy to open from these corners, and it might sorta of throw off the look, like the gold right next to the silver might not be nice, we'll see. And because all the electronics and possibly expensive batteries are going to be in the bottom compartment, I've got this guy that I can lock the whole thing up with. And the only problem with this extra heavy hasp, I've never even heard of that word before, is that the length of this metal piece right here is actually a bit longer than these three and a half inch boards, so I don't know if this is gonna work or not. One of two handles on and it's just centered in terms of the doors and then it's centered on the actual trim itself. All right, now that both of the handles are done, I need to do these side walls here. The only problem is I think I slightly miscalculated and I need maybe a half of more piece of tongue and groove, so that's annoying. All right, so I framed that top guy in right there and then I'm in the process of doing the tongue and groove. And on the bottom, I actually did a little 15 degree angle on the trim for drainage and then I matched it with the bottom of that and I cut that a little short so that it would match up with this so it didn't look weird. And it's starting to come together, looking pretty good. Hi guys, it's Lindy here. As you can see, we have completed our ton box and it looks beautiful. It hides our mini split really well. Look forward to our next video where we'll talk about how we wired everything inside. Feel free to also like and subscribe and check out our Instagram, Tiny Eat Yourself. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.